Hi, welcome to part two of working with videos and making instructional videos. Uh, in today's part, we're going to talk about how to edit your video after you've recorded it. Um, and you are making instructional videos. You are busy. You don't have time to do a lot of in-depth editing. So I'm not going to teach you how to do a lot of in-depth editing. I want to show you some quick basics, uh, things that you might use often just to make your video look a little bit cleaner and nicer, but we're not going to go into big production value here. So we'll try to keep it simple. I'll try to walk through an example of the different kinds of software that I've used and the things that we talked about uh, in the first video, just so you kind of see what the differences are and how you might use those. So let's get started editing some video with various pieces of software. All right, the first piece of software we talked about in terms of the most simple way to record your screen in that first video was QuickTime, a great way to get a screen capture. QuickTime is not designed for video editing. You can trim off the ends a little bit. That's about all you're going to do with QuickTime. So it's great for those quick and easy, hi, how's it going, glad to see you in class today kinds of videos. If you really need to do some editing, you probably don't want to do that with QuickTime. But you can take the video that you recorded in QuickTime or that you recorded in any of these other pieces of software and edit it with a number of options. So I told you I like Screencast-O-Matic a lot. And so I've got some sample videos here that I recorded in Screencast-O-Matic. I want you to see the editing features in Screencast-O-Matic. So let's open up an example here. Here's a video that I recorded. I've saved it. And now you'll see when I click on it, I have the edit option. I can edit this recording. And this is what it shows me. It shows me the canvas size. I can add music if I want. I'm showing the cursor. You can see it circling in yellow in the video. So that's what we have. I'm going to move myself up out of the way for a moment so that you can see more of the toolbar down here at the bottom because that's what I really want to get to. I want to get to the tools. These are the things that I have as options for editing. I can cut and copy and hide and do all kinds of things. I don't use this a lot. When I do use it, I'm overlaying one of two options. I'm either putting in some text uh, or I am putting in some blurring. So let's take a look at this video that we've got. It's about using Google Did Podcast. You know that Google has their own podcast player. And it talks about you can come right, right up to, to the top here and logging on to podcast.google.com. That's where I might take my tool and overlay some text and just type in to podcast. Well, podcast.google.com. And I can change the background, I can change the color, I can change the size, I can do all those things. But let's just say done. And now I'm going to kind of position that down here in the corner. And the blue shadowing here shows you that it's going to fade in. I chose this. You can see there's different fade ins or fly ins or whatever. And then you can also choose to have it fade out. And that's how long it's going to last. I can change and make it last longer by dragging these. but I'm good. Okay, let's do that. Let's back up and see how that looks on the screen. You can come I'm right talking, to and then as I talk about the URL and put it search in bigger letters down here podcasts. so you can see what These I'm talking about and it fades out. That's uh, a good trick. If you're making a video for students, that's great to give them a bigger prompt about where you want them to go or what the important words are. You could use that to pop up sight words or the names of shapes or anything you wanted. The other thing I do with this particular editing software is I will overlay a blur. Maybe I have a student name that I want to blur or a picture. Here for my example, I'm going to blur my own picture. And again, I can have it fade in and fade out if I want. But really what I want is I want to blur my picture for the entire video because I want to stay private. Okay, all done. So now as I watch my video, Did you that's know blurred that out. Google has their own podcast player. My you can overlay come right of text to is still going to pop up Google. there as and, and search it will through fade all away. of their podcasts. And These are just I'm a few of the lined up here. here but you and so when I'm done, I would just click done. Now there are other tools that I could use. I just don't use these a lot. In fact, I don't use this software to edit very often ever. 
But those are two features that I do like here. And you can see how you can use the tools. You just click, you use them, you insert what you need, and it lets you manipulate it a little bit. Not a fancy edit, but a quick and easy way to drop in some key pieces of text so that you can focus attention and a quick way to blur out the things that you don't want on the screen. And those are probably two of your most common editing tools for making instructional videos. For most of you, if you do any editing at all beyond just the very basics that we've already looked at, you will probably use iMovie. Uh, iMovie is a free download for Mac users and it should already be installed on many of your desktops or laptops. Uh, they will all have different versions of iMovie, so they may not all look exactly like the one on my screen, but they will all work pretty much the same. So what I want to show you is how to get your video into iMovie and then how to do three things with it. How to add a title card, how to do an overlay like we did before, and then how to edit out a mistake so that you don't have to throw away the whole video. All right, so let's do that. To get your video into iMovie, you would look for this little downward pointing arrow here at the top. And when you click that, it's going to open up access to your hard drive. And you would scroll through and you would find the videos that you wanted to upload. Now, I've made a couple of sample videos about podcasting. You can see them here on my, on my screen. I've already clicked the Import Selected just so that it would go a bit faster. But you would click Import Selected and they would pop right here onto your screen. So this is your media. I want to take this first clip and bring it down into my timeline down here at the bottom because that's where you do your editing. So I select it and I hit the plus sign and it will drop right down to the bottom. So that's my video. If I don't want to do anything else to it, I've got a video. Did you know that? Let's stretch out the view. Right now we are viewing the entire whatever it is, 41 second video in this very narrow line here. I'm going to come here to my settings and I'm going to stretch that way out so that now that 41 seconds takes that much space to view. And the reason I want to do that is because I want to be able to see where each word begins and ends so that I can edit that later. Now, the three things I told you we would do, we would add a title card. I'm going to come right up to titles. And I can choose any one that I want. I can choose a thing that's right in the middle that just reveals the text. I can do one where the, it becomes in focus. You can choose the title card that you like. You just click it and drag it into place. And I'm going to put it right in front of my video. You'll see it pushes the video to the side and drops it right in there. And it highlights it up here in the upper right corner, title text here. It's already selected. So. I've got a little sample video about podcasting. I type that in and I'm all set. So now if I play my video, this is what it looks like. It will fade in nicely, stay on the screen for a few seconds, fade out, Did you know right that into my video. So the transitions work smoothly. It does its own fade in and out for you. You don't have to worry about that. Now, that was the title card. The second thing I told you we would do was an overlay because you might get to a place where you want to highlight something for the students. And for us, it was highlighting where do I tell people to go Come to brightcast.google.com. And I believe that happens right here. Let's turn up the volume and listen. Right to podcast. Yep, right to podcast.google.com. So that's where I want to do my overlay is right there where I've got it marked. And so I'm going to take another title card, drag it right here, and you'll see a little purple line right there that's connecting my title card to my video. That's telling you where it's going to start showing. I'm going to drop that in place. Title text here. This time I'm going to type in podcast.google.com. Not easy to see that, so I'm going to highlight it. I am going to come up to the color. I don't want it to be white. I want it to be red so that it shows up better on the screen. And check, we're done. Now let's see how that looks. As I, I presented, you can come right to podcast.google.com 
and so then it fades away. If I wanted it to stay on the screen for longer, I would just grab the end of that overlay and drag it out to five seconds or eight seconds or however long I wanted it to stay on the screen. That takes care of the overlay. The last thing I want to do is show you how to get rid of a mistake. It's very easy here and what I'm looking for is at the end of the video I sort of did an um kind of moment. Thanks. So um yeah that would so, um, yeah, that's not a thing I need to say in the video. I want to cut that out. So I put a marker where that ends. I come up to my modify and I split my clip. Now, where do I start saying that? Right here. So, and now you can see why it's important that I can see where the words begin and end. So once again, let's modify and split that clip. So this part right here, that's the part I don't like. So, um, yeah. Click it, delete it. The other video moves right up in place, and now you, you will have a smooth transition from one to the other. Let's listen. The same with other things. That would be a great way. Perfect transition. No one will ever know you made that edit. So that's how you can bring it into iMovie, add your title, add some overlays to prompt your students or your audience, and also clean up just a bit, edit out some of the mistakes, things that you don't really like. I'll go all the way to the end. You can see I stopped talking here. But there's a lot of space out there where nothing happens. So I'm just going to kind of come out here and just split my clip, get rid of that last bit there, throw that away, and now I'm all done. I can even grab a transition and fade to black so it'll look like this at the end. If you're listening to podcast. There you go. Looks good. And that's it. If you were hoping to learn a lot about video editing tricks and how to do some of those magical things on the screen, now you're disappointed. <laughs> um, it just wasn't our intention here. If you're interested in learning more about video editing, if that's something that you think you would like to do more of and you would like to see some of the video editing tools that I work with, I'm happy to share. But for this, I just wanted to focus on the most basic things that you might do as you piece together uh, some instructional videos, because you really don't need all those fancy bells and whistles in order to deliver good content to your students or to other professionals, whoever your audience might be. I will say as just a little tip, sometimes I find that I'm most effective when I use a combination of editing tools. Uh, the blurring tool in Screencast-O-Matic is super easy to use, so sometimes when I want to blur something, I will blur it in Screencast-O-Matic, save that video, then upload that into my other video processing tool. Blur is already in place. Then I can add the title cards and the overlays and the other things that I want to add there. So sometimes it's the combination of tools that works best. So whatever works best for you, that's the strategy you should adopt. So we've taken a look at recording with some simple recording tools. We've taken a look at some very basic editing techniques. So in the last video, we will look at, now that you've got a finished video, what do you do with it? Where do you publish it to? And what are the best ways to share it with your students, with your parents, or with other professionals? I'll see you in video three.